the sad pupils of the Civil War fell silent. It was May 17, 1875, when they all traveled out to the track in Louisville, 10,000 strong in their carriages and on horseback. They all went to see Aristides win the very first Kentucky Derby. It was a different time, but the mayors and falls were out on the bluegrass that spring day, just as they are this May 7th of 1983. The Derby belonged to Kentucky when it began, but not now. Now it belongs to America, and the entries today come from all over the continent. From out of the West comes the favorite, Marfa. He's an unpredictable colt with a mind of his own and a stretch run that dazzles the eye of the beholder. Will he behave himself today? There's a mayor in the heart of Maryland who gave birth to Caveat, winner of last week's Derby trial. His daddy, Cannonade, won the Derby, and Caveat means, take warning, beware. The tough New York circuit sends Slew of Gold, a son of the great triple crown winner Seattle Slew. Slew of Gold won his division of the Wood Memorial. Clay Fellow came to Kentucky from Florida to win the Bluegrass Stakes. Current Hope made his name in the tropical air of Florida by winning the Flamingo. Sonny's Halo could become only the second Canadian bred to take the run for the Roses. The only one to date is Northern Dancer, now the most famous sire of his time. Yes, the Derby belongs to America now. The crowd has grown from that 10,000 to about 135,000 on the premises today. To say nothing of you, and the millions like you watching on television, letting us be your ticket to the greatest race of them all. Of the Kentucky Derby. Live from Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky. This ABC Sports Fan. still trying to learn to pronounce the word Kentucky because he's never been here before. Let's go now to my colleagues, as every year here at the Kentucky Derby, of course, Howard Cosell, and here he is. Thank you very much, Jim. It's good to be back at Churchill again, whether or no, and it's equally good to be back with one of the greatest jockeys of all time, Bill Hartack, who along with Eddie Arcaro is one of only two to have won five Kentucky Derbies. And Bill, big field, 20 horses, two geats, You've been through this before in 1974. Describe your reaction then. What happened? Well, Howard, I don't really think the fact that uh, you're in an outside post position is really going to have any effect on you getting into the first turn. These riders have been in, in positions like this. They've ridden out of every post position. I can't see that being a factor in the early part of the race. So much for that. But you rode Sir Tristram back in 1974. Had a good turn of early speed, faded to 11. That's, was the field a factor? That's true. I broke out of number 20. I got a good position going into the turn. I, I was weighing third going into the turn. I was riding a very unseasoned horse. He finished in the middle of the pack, but the post position didn't hurt him at all. Now, Jim McKay has already mentioned uh, the troubles of Martha in the past. Do you expect trouble in this race, this derby today? I expect, uh, I expect a lot of traffic problems from about the 3-8 pole till they turn for home. Not only because Martha's in the race, Martha just just happens to have some bad habits. But when those come from behind, horses wind up, and those leaders start dropping like flies around the turn, the ones that can't hack it, there could be a lot of congestion around that turn. Okay, Bill. Now, we've already had troubles with Jorge Velasquez today. We'll develop that later. Right now, I want to go to Jack Whitaker's earlier conversation with trainer Wayne Lucas on Moffat. We're standing here in front of Marfa's stall, and this is Wayne Lucas's trainer, and we have to ask you, of course, how is he? He's doing fine, Jack. I think he's handling all the pressure and the uh, media attention and so forth. Very good. He came out of the bluegrass all right? Yeah, it was a tough race. It was a race in the mud, as everybody knows, and it was a race that uh, was very hard, I think, on all the horses, but we've had nine days to regroup, and uh, he's gotten in some good works here, and I feel he's really ready. Well, I think everybody in the United States knows that he has a tendency to lug in. Have you worked on that since the bluegrass? Well, Jack, as trainers, we try to daily work with these horses and correct the good things and the bad things in their habits. But uh, I think we've made big strides this week, and I, I look for a very good race from him. Will Velasquez ride him any differently? Well, the thing that George has to realize is that he has to be a passenger. As long as he asserts himself early on the horse and lets this horse know that he's definitely in charge and the boss, I don't think he'll have any trouble. And George did, uh, and I have had a good discussion after the bluegrass, and we realized that uh, this is a big thing, and he's going to have to assert himself on the horse, and I'm sure he will. All right, good luck, Wayne, and thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. 
Now back to Jim McKay. Well, there he is right now, a bit of a horse lad from Marfa. He's here last year's Kentucky Derby on a masterful ride on Gato del Sol, Eddie de la Husay. And Eddie, your horse this year is a little different than the gray last year, isn't it? Yes, he has the speed. Well, Gato didn't have speed. He came from way out of it. A lot of people like Sonny Salo, and we've watched him go by here, and he seems to be fine. Yes, he looks nice and quiet. Now, they tell me it's not raining as hard as it was, and certainly the track shouldn't be affected that much, but what will it do to you riders? Well, uh, I don't believe that if it stops raining right now, I don't believe it'll affect us. But if it keeps raining, sometimes you have trouble with your rain slipping and stuff like that, you know. But right now it looks pretty good. How, do you, how is your horse on a rough track, you know? Well, Mr. Cross, the trainer, uh, said he can handle anything, so. All right, well, good luck. We hope you have a nice trip, Eddie. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for talking with us. All right. Eddie Delahousse, ladies and gentlemen, on Sunny's Halo, the winner of... Uh, Last uh, year's derby, there is Sunny Halo, looking as I said very well. All the Colts' uh, coats are shiny, of course, because they walked over here in that downpour and they're all wet. But uh, everybody's behaving quite admirably at the moment. And now we're looking over at Martha's stall, and he looks all right. I have with me here the man who bred Martha, and tell total departure and Balboa native at two to one. Chumming and caveat the entry at six to one. The Woody Stevens horses. Freezing Rain in Highland Park at 22 to 1. Slua Gold is 9 to 1 now. He's in the number one hole. Play Fellow at 11 to 1. Won the Bluegrass. Desert Wine at 18 to 1. A speed horse. Country Pine at 45 to 1 now. And he's a good horse. Sonny's Halo at 5 to 2. The Canadian Challenger. Current Hope, winner of the Flamingo at 17 to 1. Parfetima, good speed horse at 40 to 1 right now. Paxson Bellow at 25 to 1. And then the field horses, Law Talk, Explosive Wagon, My Mac, Paris Prince, and Love Libra, all being held at 10 to 1. The Kentucky Derby proudly presents the 109th running of the Kentucky Derby. They're supposed to play with no cue. Canadian jockey Sandy Hawley up, winner of the Louisiana Derby. 1A, speed horse. Look for early speed here. Total departure. The jockey Pat Valens well. And then the controversial horse. 1X Martha in the 18th hole. May actually be helped by it. The 18th hole in the auxiliary gate. He's positioned where Gatto Del Sol was a year ago. Velazquez up. Now the Woody Stevens entry. Chummy running poorly this year and very poorly in the derby trial last saturday but woody stevens thinks he's ready and that's enough for most eddie maple up caveat caveat the brilliant winner of the derby trial coming out of the 20th hole whether that will hurt him or not remains to be seen and then the tony basila entry 
Freezing Rain, the number three horse. Bill Gaviria, the jockey, out of the eighth hole. And Highland Park, number three C, a horse with a chance. Don Brumfield, the veteran, up out of the 19th hole, though, and he'll be disadvantaged by the way he runs. Finally, the next one, the number four horse, out of the troublesome first hole, where you're on a pin. Slew a goal, Angel Cordero Jr. up. Sid Waters, the trainer. Then Playfellow, whom we've already talked about. John Kruger, back in the saddle, no longer training. Playfellow, out of the second hole. Desert Wine, the speed horse, number six. Chris McCarran, superb jockey up. Jerry Fanning, the trainer, the fifth hole. And then, Country Pine, the Dan Galbraith horse with Mike Venezia up. A long shot, but a horse with a chance. So many do in this race. Then, the eighth horse, Sonny Zell. You heard Jack Whitaker talk to Eddie De La Husse, and my talk with Bill Hartack. Sonny's Hell, a winner of the Arkansas Derby, out of the 10th hole. Current Hope, the gray horse, Alexis Solis up, stormed through Florida. Great young jockey, but maybe a case of nerves here. Ralph Lauren, the trainer, won the Hutchison and the Flamingo. The 10 horse, Parfait Mont, and Overlay, Herb McCauley, the jockey, finished second in the division of the wood, ran a very good race. The next horse, the 11 horse, Paxson Bello, a horse to watch, very much an overlay, Jeffrey Fell, a jockey. And then come the field horses, the 12 horse, Law Talk. The 13 horse, there is Law Talk, Carlos Marquez up. The 13 horse, Explosive Wagon, great speed, has beaten lesser horses, may surprise. Then there is the 14, My Mac, Don Macbeth up. That's Newcomb Green's horse. And then, Paris Prince, trained by, oh there is my Mac, I had gotten ahead for a moment, and the next horse is Paris Prince, trained by Laz Barrera, and you heard Laz sound off about the odds maker, but he's a great trainer, and he's got a chance, won the California Derby, and Lava Libra, the winding up the field, Julio Espinosa, another of the Panamanian jockeys, Gustinus, another Panamanian, the trainer. So that's the field, the post, par the post parade for the 109th running of the Kentucky Derby. And as the rains begin to come down again more heavily, I want to take you back in time. It was an event that has been picturized more than any other event in the history of the Derby. And as you see the pictures, the story will explain itself. Because remember, even in the face of what you're about to see, no horse and play fellow is the horse perhaps most to watch, especially under these conditions. Like I said, I think Playfellow is, is an honest horse. He's coming on to him, uh, coming to himself. But my choice is still Sonny's Halo. All right, but Harvey Veneer from Waterloo, Iowa. This means everything in the world to him. Here is 1A again, a Wayne Lucas horse, the speed horse. He may well lead this race. Total departure. And number eight coming in now. Number eight is Sonny's Halo from Canada. He can run on the front or back in the middle of somewhere. Number 13 is Explosive Wagon from down Louisiana way. Number nine, Current Hope. He won the Flamingo and hasn't raced since. He's been off for five weeks. Now maybe a little problem with number 10. That's Parfaitmont. Parfaitmont gets a little spooky sometimes when he runs into strange situations. So whether it's the gate or the rain and the high wind that we have right now, we're not sure. The track's still looking pretty fast. Number eight, there's going in. And number 14, I believe that is there, My Mac. Another come from behind, winner of the Tropical Park Derby. Number 15 is Paris Prince, now to Mike Battaglia, high above. Okay, thank you, Jim. And the horses are loading very well. The horses that are in the gate are standing well and uh, getting ready to load Marsha. Marsha goes in very nicely into post 18, waiting for Highland Park. And the outside horse, Caveat, and will be ready for a start. Caveat is the only one left to be loaded. He goes up on the outside. They're at the post. Waiting for the lead from the center of the track. 
We have far played on Sonny's Halo and Toe departure between horses. Moving up from the extreme outside, it's freezing rain. Also up from the outside, love will be for desert wine on the rail. Before the first turn, it's total departure in front, has it by a head. Sonny's Halo second half, desert wine third of length. Freezing rain fourth by head, love will be for fifth, two lengths, far played on six, smooth old seven. It's a length further back up on the outside, Max and Bella is his neck. On the extreme outside, it's Paris Prince. Length and a half back to play the fellow, followed by Explosive Dragon. Then it's a gap of a length and a half down on the inside of my back. On the back stretch until the departure, leave the length. Sonny's Halo is second head, there's a one third, two and a half length. From the outside, now Highland Park takes over in fourth by a half. Buffalo Libre is fifth by head for Parfait Mont, sixth head, smooth old seven. Length and a half further back up on the outside. That is Paris Prince running in next, then down along the inside, it's Pat Tindello. Beginning the bunch and returning Sonny's Halo moves by and gets the lead. Between horses, Desmond Wine and Highland Park are both gaining ground. They're very well punched into the turn. Desmond Wine on the outside, on the inside, Sonny's Halo. Those two are together, up between horses, it's Highland Park. Smooth Gold also moves up between horses. They're moving for the stretch. Sonny's Halo on the inside has his head in front. Desert Wine is second. Highland Park still right there. Now coming up on the outside and gaining ground. Smooth Gold Martha on the extreme outside. Down the stretch, it's Sonny's Halo on the inside. Desert Wine is second. On the outside, Martha up between horses. Smooth Gold and Ray Fellow. They're nearing the finish. It's Sonny's Halo. He's going to win it. Sonny's Halo wins it a length and a half. Photo for a second. I think Desert Wine may have held on over a fast closing caveat. Caveat came from way back in the field. It's going to take a photograph to separate Desert Wine and Caveat, but Sonny's Halo. Sonny's Halo, the winner of the Arkansas Derby, comes here, wins the Kentucky Derby in a running time of two minutes, two and one-fifth seconds. That's two in a row for Eddie Delahousse. And back to you, Jim. And so Sonny's Halo unofficially has become only the second Canadian great horse to win the Kentucky Derby. The other one, Northern Dancer in 1964, who since has become the greatest sire in the world. This horse has raced only twice in 1983. He was the Canadian two-year-old champion. I wonder if Eddie Delahousse can hear me. Can you hear me, Eddie? Can you hear me, Eddie? Eddie, this is Joe McKay. Can you hear me? Apparently not. Jim, anyway, it's his second Kentucky Derby victory. Jim, what? Can you hear me, Eddie? Yeah, we're right on. We've got to wait to think about in a minute. Okay. You got us now, Eddie? No, I don't think so. Okay, I was saying that Sonny's Halo has raced only twice in 1983. He was injured near the end of the season in 82 after being the Canadian two-year-old champion. He spent most of the winter in a warm swimming pool, a horse swimming pool, in Southern California. Nice way to spend the winter. Came back, won two stakes races, including the Arkansas Derby. He becomes the first winner of the Arkansas Derby ever to come and win the Kentucky Derby. His trainer, David Cross, by the way, gave up almost his entire stable. He lost one horse after another because he was taking such total care of Sonny's Halo. It has paid off for him. He... Certainly will have no trouble getting horses right now. It's his first derby starter for trainer David Cross. Eddie Delahousse, of course, the first back-to-back -back derby rider since Ron Turcott, as Howard Cosell mentioned, since Turcott won with Reba Ridge in 72, Secretary 1973. A look again at the stretch run. Sonny Halo on the inside. Desert Wine was with him all the way. You'll see that Martha did make a run at it. But coming up to the very late going, also I believe we're going to see Chumming. People didn't think too much of Chumming. The million dollar yearling had not run up to his reputation uh, so far this year. But there they were coming to the wire. Martha on the extreme outside among the front runners. Sonny's Halo seemingly just beautifully under control by Eddie Delahousse. And still Desert Wine in second place. But watch Highland Park just inside of, of uh, Marfa. He may have gotten second. Let's see. Or just outside of him, I should say. Here he comes. Here he comes. Right up to Marfa for third place. Still in first. Sonny's Halo. Then second. Desert Wine. And third. It's not, it's not chumming. It's caveat. Not two, but two B. 
caveat, unofficially third. Eddie Delahousie, do you hear me now? Yes! Congratulations to you two in a row. It looked like the race was run exactly the way you would like it. Yeah, it worked out perfect. You relaxed good, getting off the total departure. I got another word, and the McCarran came about a half mile full on it. Uh, I kind of crushed my heart a little bit, but he relaxed real well. Any visibility problems in that rain and wind? It was fine, you yeah. know. All right, congratulations to you, Eddie. You have gone into the horse racing history books now. Succeeding Ron Turcott, the last to win. Seven dollars for the win. Four eighty the place for the show, and then twelve twenty the place for Desert Wine. Nine eighty the show, and then five twenty the show for Caveat. And so, in the rain and the thunder cla claps and the lightning and this terrible weather, it still was. A very exciting Kentucky Derby. The time, 2.02 and 1. And of course, the record time for the Derby, Secretariat in 73, 159 and 2. Then Northern Dancer at 2. And here he is. And let's tell him the little anecdote of you and Shu and Lafitte Pinkai and Sandy Hawley in that restaurant in the Westwood section of. Los Angeles last Sunday night and what you said you were going to do. Well, I said I, I was hoping to try to win two this year. Make it two this year. Then it was the dreamy. So, the complete order of finish. Let's have a look at that now. As you look at the huddled umbrellas on the victory stand. Sunny's Halo, Desert Wine, Caveat, Slew a Goal was fourth, Marfa finished fifth, the free race favorite. Play Fellow was sixth, then Pox and Bellow, Country Pine, Balboa Native and Paris Prince. Curran Hope was 11th, Chumming 12th, Freezing Rain 13th, My Mac 14th, Explosive Wagon 15th, Bring Up the Rear, Parfaitement 16th, Highland Park, Lava Libra, Law Talk, and Total Departure. The complete and official order of finish in the 1983 109th Kentucky Derby. The run for the roses, befogged by rain. We'll be back. <laughs>